back to Wargaming World and to France 1940 for a new game of Nuts. Now, this is going to be the first time we've played uh, Nuts in 2021, and uh, it's actually a build on a game that I played last week, which was Chain of Command, and uh, I've moved the board further up. So, for uh, everybody who's uh, followed uh, the game uh, that I played previously on Chain of Command, we played up to this farm here and uh, we had French Senegalese who were holding off a German platoon and uh, they managed to capture uh, two officers and that's who's inside uh, this building here and this game is to uh, get them back by uh, a German platoon of uh, two squads. Now the, uh, the French are going to be at the back here, so more or less from the end of the field up to the start of this uh, farm area. So we've got about two feet there. So uh, for those familiar with nuts, we'll have our PEF somewhere in that area. And then for the Germans, we have the remainder of the grid. So we've got uh, nine rectangles and uh, we'll see where uh, with the Germans operating here. Uh, where they're going to uh, deploy and then see if they can find the officers. First of all, I dare say to see whether they remain in the uh, the farm building. But as they've been uh, withdrawn with our Senegalese forces, they're going to be somewhere over here. It's a question of being able to find them. So, uh, just a note about the table. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, geek villains is the uh, the battle mat, and then a lot of uh, uh, the scenery is uh, the last valley. So uh, a lot of the uh, trees, fields, etc. And uh, the buildings are uh, empires at war, and then there's uh, some uh, homemade stuff as well there. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, if you're interested in uh, where this is from and uh, you're interested in picking some of that uh, up yourselves, then uh, that's who the manufacturers are. Okay, so let's start by having a look at the forces. I'm going to make uh, some assumptions uh, about the fact that I think you've seen uh, nuts beforehand. There are a number of videos I've put out in terms of how to play. However, it's important to uh, cover some key uh, elements in all games. First of all, it's nuts version 4. Now, there are some options you can use with version 4, but version 4 is the, the rule set that I'm playing here. And uh, what we need to do is to have a look at the characters. So uh, let's go through uh, the characters for the Germans first of all. Now the German forces themselves are made up of two squads. Uh, we've got this one on the right hand side. And uh, over here, the one on the left hand side. Now the one on the right is the first one advancing uh, towards this building. Which, as I've mentioned beforehand, we think might contain uh, the two officers that were captured in the last battle. And on the left hand side we've got this unit uh, which uh, is covering that advance. So let's take uh, a closer look at this unit. We've got uh, on the left hand side uh, an MG34. Uh, it's an MG34, it's got three crew in total. Then we have uh, three rifles right at the front there. They're also uh, uh, covering any potential enemy uh, appearing. And three rifles behind them. Now the unit is uh, eloquently uh, referred to simply as grunts. So we haven't got main characters here, but we do need to have a look and see what the quality of this unit is in terms of its rep. So the rep is the test that we make each time to see whether it can make uh, an action. So. What we're going to roll here is that we're going to roll 1d6. If we get a 1, then it's rep. The rep of the unit is 3. Uh, 2 to 5, and it's 4, which is pretty standard. And 6. If we roll a 6, we're going to say that their rep is 5, buoyed by the uh, uh, success they've had early on in the day. So we've got a 2, so it's a standard regular unit of 4. So we have a similar unit here. Uh, with the um, uh, one I've just described. Okay, so we've got a standard section, but we've got one or two additions. We also have a mortar team here, 
and we also have a medic. Standing next to the med medic is uh, our key character, so we're going to work out him in a moment. But what we do need to do is to have a look again at the rep of the main unit that's advancing, the mortar team, and I'm even going to give a rep for the medic. So the main unit, have a four, and that is a standard four for the rep for the unit. The mortar team, five, so again it's a standard four, and finally the medic. And the medic is a five, so again the rep is four. So I also pointed out this character. This is our main uh, character for the Germans. And they have uh, some star ratings as well as attributes. So what we're going to do for this game, and it can vary from one game to another, we're going to say we're going to have one star status, and then we're going to have one additional attribute. So we need to roll the star status. It's one to four here. So it's star status number one. So his star status is a star power, so uh, effectively we can interpret that to say that uh, what might be a dis uh, disabling kind of damage uh, to him normally uh, is, uh, is ignored. The attribute on the other hand works uh, in two ways. We have a number of tables, so we're going to roll the green dice is the uh, table and then the black dice is to say which particular attribute. So we're going to have a look at uh, table four and the first attribute. And with table four and uh, number one, actually it's completely underwhelming, which means there's no additional attribute here. So all we know is this individual is that uh, when we get uh, uh, some damage, uh, some disabling kind of damage, normally uh, he can uh, ignore that. So let's have a think about other characters in this game. These are our two officers who have been captured and uh, will now appear with our infantry. Now these three are our potential enemy forces, our PEF. Now we need to roll where they will appear initially in our grid. So if you remember our grid's got uh, seven, eight and nine, so we're gonna roll to see where they appear and in addition to that is that we have two sections uh, which have escaped from the earlier action as well as a VB team which is a, a grenade launcher team. However they might not necessarily appear when we roll so uh, this will become apparent during the game but they're only potential forces so we need to work out a number of things. One is what the rep is going to be of this unit and we also need to have a look at a character as well. And this is our French officer, our character who uh, was in the action uh, previously. And uh, what we can say is that we know in terms of the PEF, we will at least get one unit because the one unit will also have the officers with it. And so we're going to need to roll for this character as well and to see what uh, attributes he may have. First thing I'm going to roll for is the rep of the uh, PEF. What we're going to say is a one is three. 2 to 5 is 4, and 6 will be a potential re-roll. It would normally be 5, but they've just been knocked back in terms of action. So we'll re-roll again. 1 to 3, they do have 5, 4, 5 and 6. It'll just be 4. But anyway, let's have a look. The rep is a 3. So all of the PEF units are going to be a 4. I'm going to roll for the star skill of our French officer. And that's a four. And that's a good attribute because it means, uh, sorry, it's a good star skill, so it means uh, he has free will. And uh, we'll see how that impacts the game uh, moving forward, but it means he can make a choice about the reaction of his forces. We need to have a look at which attribute. So it's the green dice for the table. So it's table five, number two. Well, this means our character is fairly sickly and uh, it's not uh, great after a battle when he needs to uh, recover uh, but uh, it's not going to uh, impinge greatly on uh, him during this game. And the final uh, preparatory roll is that we need to roll and see where the PEF will be. Remember, it's seven, eight, and nine on the grid, so I'm going to roll for the three uh, units or potential units. So one, two is grid seven, uh, three, four, eight, 
five, six is a nine. And so uh, we have uh, one in the in grid seven and two in grid nine. So there we go. There's a position of our three PEF, two in grid nine and one in grid seven. And so just to recap then, we have our two German squads. We have this one on the right hand side advancing towards uh, the building, which is where the officers uh, were last uh, well seen or know where they've, uh, they've gone. Uh, they're being covered by the uh, German squad on the left hand side. But we know that the PEF have in fact retreated uh, back, so they've escaped from that building and out the back and uh, they have the officers and somewhere we're going to see where we get some kind of engagement. So first turn and uh, let's see if units can move and uh, we can have all of the uh, PEF and the Germans. Right, we have a double three, and uh, with a three it's equal to the PEF's investment level, which is uh, also three, which means uh, we do have to re-roll this, but we also get one uh, additional PEF, so I need to roll for that. So the additional PEF, uh, one, two, it'll be grid seven, three, four, eight, and six, it's in nine, as with the others. So we now have three PEF in this area. So I needed to do a re-roll, and the re-roll means that the Germans can't move, uh, but the PEF can. And so, uh, in grid 7, what do we do there? Uh, well, that's two uh, passes of the rep, so it will move uh, six inches towards the Germans, but in cover. We now have three tests in zone 9. Firstly, the first one. Uh, that won't move at all. Second. Uh, the second uh, will move uh, six inches towards the Germans. And the third uh, will not move uh, at all. So we can see that uh, unit have moved uh, from uh, grid uh, seven uh, across towards grid four. And then we've got three here. Uh, one remaining cover is in this position, and that's the end of turn one. Turn two. And uh, in turn two we have both the uh, Germans and the PEF moving. So this is our German movement uh, along the line here. It remains uh, being covered by that unit over on that side. Let's see how far and how many of the PEF will move. PEF in grid seven. Uh, they won't move uh, any further in this turn. And the three in uh, grid nine. So the one that moved originally, uh, that will move uh, six inches further. Two which didn't move originally, uh, one will move six inches. And the last one doesn't move. So as a remain in cover, uh, the units uh, look like this. And at the moment we've got uh, these beginning to uh, separate out and that one at the top there remains in the cover of that tree. So the way we might interpret this is the Germans are beginning to uh, advance towards the building as uh, they might and in the background the uh, French have reformed in the back of this field and uh, they now have some troops together and are advancing back towards their original position of the building looking to uh, reoccupy that so uh, yeah, we've got uh, a possibility of uh, some uh, engagement in this area. Next turn. Uh, none of the PEF can move, uh, but the Germans can move in whatever they, way they wish. So here the Germans have advanced. Uh, the first team, the rifle team, stay in the cover of the, uh, uh, the stone wall. And the MG34 team has moved separately uh, to advance towards the... Uh, Stonewall again, maybe to give some cover to the rifle team as it approaches the uh, building. Next turn, and we have uh, all units uh, able to move. Okay, the MG34 team is in place. Those rifles have stayed where they are, but on the other side here, uh, the whole squad has moved uh, moved further up as they uh, approach uh, the target here. 
And on the other side, let's have a look at the PEF movement. So starting this unit uh, up here at the top, let's see how it reacts. It will move six inches further uh, towards the Germans. You can just see uh, where the marker is. Let's take a look and see if this one moves. 2d6 again, two passes, so therefore it's, uh, it moves another six inches towards the Germans. Now it moves into this position, remaining uh, uh, in cover, but I think it's potentially uh, in the sight of the Germans on this side, so we need to take a test. So we're going to take an insight test from the Germans. They've got a rep of four, and they both passed. I think they've spotted uh, a uh, the French unit. Just before I work out the consequence of that, I'm just going to uh, see if we can move uh, the other uh, two units. Well, let's take a look at this one first. And uh, that's uh, a pass of two for its rep. And uh, that is its final position. And finally, the unit which didn't move first of all, and it doesn't move uh, either in this one. So this is the final position of the fourth PEF. Okay, so we need to roll uh, one to four. Uh, it's a uh, standard reinforcements. Five, six, it's in a defensive position. I would add that I've been moving the PEF 6 rather than 8 inches, but I'm going to continue doing that. I think it's fairly consistent. And uh, let's take a look. So, uh, we've detected our uh, PEF and it's in a defensive position. So, we have our, the way we work this is, our investment level is 3 for the uh, infantry. So we roll 1d6 plus 3 to see what we've got uh, for uh, the Germans. So we've got a 5, so it's an 8 in total. I also need to minus 1d6 because the French are in cover. So we had 8 and minus 2, so we have 6 in total. And so we've got a full section uh, in position in a defensive uh, position here with uh, behind a stone wall. Now the second rank there I've separated out because uh, they'll be prone. Uh, they can't uh, fire over the uh, stone wall, so they wouldn't just be standing behind the uh, unit and then therefore subject to fire. So I'm just uh, pulling them out there so we know that they exist, uh, but it's only the uh, essentially the front rank uh, that are firing. We can't see the ones behind them. So the next question is, who fires first? Now, uh, we're going to test with the German leader, which is five, but we also get an extra dice for the French because they're in cover. Now, the reason why we're adding a dice there is you get plus one if you're in cover. Now, I know the Germans are also behind a stone wall, but they approached to that position. You might say, well, we didn't know whether the PEF approached to that position either, but we, we do because when we rolled, they were in a defensive position already. Had, we, uh, had they appeared from a one to four, we essentially would be rolling the same amount of dice, but we aren't. So we're going to roll three dice with the French, uh, and it's four for their rep, and it's five for the Germans. So let's see what happens. Right, OK, so uh, it's two each. So we've got the same number, uh, but it's the static uh, unit who fire first, so it'll be the French who fire on the Germans as they advance. Okay, so we're going to fire with, uh, we've got four rifles, a machine gun, and uh, I've also got a grenade launcher. So uh, I'm going to use the uh, version for the options that you can have, the option rules, uh, for those who uh, are using them. And uh, this is how we work it out. So I'm just going to talk through this uh, first time we do the firing. I won't do it uh, moving forward. But the two red dice is because our machine gun has a... a an opportunity of potentially hitting four targets. It's the two inch swathe that it has with it being a light machine gun and the two inch swathe in fact will hit three of the four targets so it's going to be the full machine gun team there. So we roll against the rep which is four and if we hit if we get two on the rep we'll hit all three targets. Uh, the green dice will be the uh, grenade launcher that I'll do in a moment and uh, in terms of the four uh, notes of two dice. That's going to be the rep of each of the four riflemen. 
firing at each individual target. Start by firing the light machine gun and that has one rep and I'm just going to show the table there to say that because uh, it's only one hit uh, it's uh, in cover and therefore it'll return fire. Now before we do that uh, we're going to work out the rifles so the first rifle firing at the uh, machine gun team uh, that's a hit. Second member of the rifle team that's a miss. Third member of the team that's a hit and finally our character and that's a one hit. Sorry when I refer to a miss sorry I say that's one hit. It isn't one hit it's simply a one it's in cover so it would return fire. Now so taking a look at that uh, when we have the hits so that's the, uh, the one which got two uh, reps uh, we'll have to go on the uh, uh, the wound table. Uh, when it's a miss, uh, it would return fire, but it's already going to go uh, return fire with the uh, light machine gun. And then at the back there, we've got our uh, character. Now he only has a pistol, so he's out of range uh, in terms of uh, returning fire. Finally, we've got the uh, grenade launcher. And the grenade launcher uh, lands exactly where it wants to, which is on that team also. I've just moved a tree out of the way there because uh, the three of the machine gun team have really taken a bit of a hammering. So the two on the end uh, have, have been hit by the uh, by rifle fire, but all three are affected by uh, the grenade. So let's see the result of it. First of all, the man on the far right of the side, uh, a one, which would mean uh, that he ducks back based on the rifle, but we need to test the grenade in a second. The man in the middle uh, also ducked back. The third, three also ducks back. Right, I've realised that I've tested the man in the middle so that he was going to be tested for the uh, grenade, so he doesn't need to take another test and he will uh, be uh, knocked back. But we need to do the two on the end because of the grenade. Right, so on the right hand side is a three, and that's just, uh, will be knocked back. Finally, just not back there as well. And so, and I think this is fairly fortunate, is that uh, despite the fact that there's been uh, fairly heavy firing, uh, the unit is uh, simply uh, thrown back, it has to duck back. Uh, each man, or each man I should say, uh, has done so into, uh, into further cover. And uh, that's at the end of, uh, of that turn. Now, I'd like to speed up the uh, game a little bit uh, in terms of uh, explanation. Uh, it's the start of turn five, and uh, all units of uh, each uh, each force can move. Right, the German response is that we're going to fire this mortar at, uh, at the French in the position uh, over on the right-hand side here that fired a moment ago. We have this unit under its leader. Uh, who had to uh, fall back. We need to do a test to make sure that they can get uh, back uh, up and running, which we'll do. The rifle unit in front of it, under the, its uh, junior leader, are going to fire. A few of them, uh, probably three or four, will fire rifles back across towards the French. Over on this side, we have this unit has already moved, taking advantage of the cover of the hedge. It's being covered by three riflemen uh, after they, they've heard firing and uh, want to make sure they give some cover, so that's uh, an appropriate advance there with this German unit. So we've got three PEFs, uh, we've got one unit that's out now, but we'll have to test that separately in a second. So let's see if this one, the one that's uh, just behind this uh, wall, how it reacts, and how it moves. Uh, it'll move uh, six inches closer to the uh, Germans, and that's where it gets to. Secondly, the one uh, over here. Uh, this time it uh, moves towards the uh, Germans and it joins the other marker there, so we need to test this one. That unit, uh, in fact, now that moves uh, in the opposite direction uh, back to where the, uh, the other unit was, so it moves uh, directly away uh, from the enemy. So effectively they've just changed positions. And now we finally need to uh, test uh, what this unit is going to do before we work out uh, the interaction with the Germans. And for those unfamiliar with the game, this is what we're testing now. So uh, they're not a potential enemy, they're just the non-player. So we need to roll and see what operation they will make. Uh, they're in a defensive position, so let's see how many times they pass their rep. 
uh, it's just the one. So if we go back to the rule there, and the one is they'll fire at the nearest enemy if they can, and that's uh, exactly what they'll do. So the French are staying put as the uh, non-player version and they will be firing at uh, the Germans. Now we've already said that these Germans are going to fire at the French too. They're both in a defensive position so we need to test who fires first. So we'll work on the rep and both forces have a rep of four. The rep of four and uh, both uh, both with two. Okay, and I'm going to say the French go first because they were in the original defensive position. Starting with the machine gun I'm going to say can only hit two men. And uh, that is a hit. Grenades. And that's a hit also. Individual uh, rifles. And that's just uh, uh, in cover, so they'll return fire. Second rifles. Uh, same again, return fire. Third. That's a hit. And finally, uh, return fire. Now, before we do any returning of fire, uh, we've got to note that the machine gun hit and the grenade, so uh, let's just start there. And we're going to start uh, with the machine gun hitting the two men at the end, one of which is the NCO. NCO first of all, rep of four. And uh, that'll be uh, knocked back. Rifles next to him. That's uh, a six is a kill. Now the grenade essentially, uh, it was looking at what I'm going to say is the same target, so um, we're going to say that we'll ignore the grenade hit, but we do need to look at the man, so we've got one man down, the man next to him uh, was hit directly uh, with the rifle, so we need to test that. The man hit with the rifle uh, is killed also. Now, uh, we've got two men killed, the one man who's standing next to them was going to return fire. But before we do that, we need to do a man down test. Uh, he will be able to fire back, uh, but we need to test this first. So we're taking a man down test because the whole uh, the whole unit will need to take it, and uh, we need to roll three d six. We get a plus one because we're in cover, and see how we uh, pass the uh, test. We could use the leader, uh, but the leader's. Uh, uh, rep is the same as the unit. So the unit is four, and uh, we've uh, passed that, so we'll just carry on. Remember, we had the man with the rifle, so he will now fire back and hit. So he was firing back at the rifleman, not the machine gun, and uh, that means uh, the individual hit uh, will be knocked back. Now we're going to take a test here to see if this uh, unit uh, essentially will rally. We do have a medic there, by the way, but uh, those two men uh, were killed outright, so uh, there's nothing you can do uh, there. We're going to test with the leader, uh, leader rep of five. Unit are also behind cover, so that's fine. They can uh, rally and carry on. Finally, we're going to fire the mortar, and uh, that's uh, a miss. And the start of turn six, so we have uh, both uh, forces being able to uh, move, and uh, let's see what happens. So we're going to have the mortar fire again. Action of this unit is to be to move into position. So one's moved across, and this can fire. We need to test the junior leader with him to see if he can come back into position. And on the further side. Uh, these Germans continue to advance, covered by three riflemen. I just need to uh, start by doing a test for that junior leader. Let's see if he carries on. Uh, just the one, I think he might just stay put. You know, the unit is more than half strength, so he's fine to uh, move back. Uh, but we need again this unit uh, to see who fires first in terms of the French, whether the French will remain in that position. So let's test this uh, PEF, see whether he moves uh, again. In advance towards uh, the Germans. Uh, no, it's a one, so uh, he stays where he is. Two on this side, so we'll start with the one furthest away. Uh, and that advances towards the Germans. The one here by the tree. He stays where he is. So in the end, I've got two PEF there. 
Well, there's a third man here, but if you remember, he was the one knocked back from that unit. But we need to test this unit and to see, as the non-player, whether they will continue to stay in this position or move away. Oh, they'll stay uh, exactly where they are. In fact, I've got that wrong. Uh, the fact they passed with two means that they will now move to an attacking role and move towards the enemy. So the uh, first uh, team, the rifle team, starts to move uh, further forward. Uh, we've still got cover from uh, the machine gun team, so it's still got some firing capability, but I think it loses its advantage uh, in terms of being in a defensive position. So we'll need to roll uh, between the French there and the Germans on the other side here, both the machine gun team and the rifles up at the top to see who fires first. So in terms of firing, um, I'm going to say, well, five is actually the rep of the leader. So I'm going to factor that in, I think, with regards to the machine gun team. And uh, as the French have moved to an attacking position, I'm going to say this time the uh, Germans have the firing advantage to start off with. So I'm going to say that this is the target, this unit as it advances. I'm going to say it's got an element of soft cover, but we're going to start off with the firing of uh, the machine gun, uh, which can certainly hit the front two men. And uh, that's just uh, one. Uh, so it's just a one, so the unit will uh, return fire. However, we're going to see how the rifles do uh, first of all, which are up at the top here. And uh, I think realistically, uh, we've got four rifles firing, so we're going to take uh, uh, each of the individual men uh, moving across. I don't really see in this angle uh, with the rifles they're in cover, so I'm going to say they're in the open. So, to speed this up, I've just used uh, some different uh, dice. So, that's easy enough. We're going to say the green one is the, uh, the man furthest back, so it's a miss. Uh, the second is, oh, sorry, the second from the back is going to be, uh, they're going to fire back. And the front two are both hit. Red dice is the man right in the front. And they're both going to have to uh, fall back. So this is the outcome, so they duck back uh, over the wall and uh, I'm going to say that they were originally going to fire back at the machine gun but they're not now because they've uh, they've moved. We do have this third man, the guy at the front, who is going to return fire at one of the rifles. And uh, uh, the, the, guy, the German, I should say, um, it's not a hit and for the second time will fire back, they, he will return fire. And this time, uh, that's a hit. And the outcome of that, uh, it's equal to uh, the rep, so I think uh, he will be knocked out. So, there's a man down, and before we can reply with the uh, light machine gun team, a couple of tests we need to do. First of all, we need to test uh, the team uh, as a whole, as a consequence of seeing the man going down. And uh, that's fine, uh, they will carry on. I just need to take a test uh, for the guy who got knocked back uh, last time. Uh, he'll be fine, he can't fire in this uh, phase, but he'll be okay. Now I'm going to say that uh, whilst the rifle, uh, are, or the rifles I should say, are moving and beginning to move on attack, uh, the light machine gun and the uh, grenade launcher are able to uh, fire to offer cover. This, by the way, is going to be the last uh, of the uh, grenade from uh, from this uh, VB rifle. So uh, the red dice is the machine gun team. So that means it's a miss uh, with the grenade launcher, and uh, with the uh, with the one from the machine gun team uh, that prompts the MG uh, thirty four to fire back. MG thirty four firing back can hit two men in total and uh, it doesn't and they're in cover so the light machine gun uh, will fire back. The light machine gun is returning fire uh, for the first time and uh, it's, uh, on, it's not a, a hit uh, but it will prompt the machine gun team, uh, it can't return fire for a second time, it will prompt it to uh, duck back. So the MG team for the second time in fact is now uh, pushed back and uh, that's the end of turn six.
Actually, it's not the end of turn six. I've forgotten to do the uh, mortar. So the mortar fires, and uh, that's not going to be a hit. Um, the light machine gun, which is his target, would return fire, uh, but it's not in line of sight, so uh, that is the end of the turn. So, a brief recap the uh, Germans are uh, engaged now with the uh, French on the right hand side and they are beginning to advance so we have our French here behind them there's another two potential enemy forces and one up by the woods there up at the top on the left hand side the Germans are successfully advancing towards uh, the building here and so we uh, might get themselves in a defensive position, but we don't know as yet where the two officers are that they're looking to save. Turn seven. And so uh, now we have a double. And because we have a double three, uh, that means, like it was uh, earlier in the game, a uh, reinforcement for the PEF. So we have another a potential enemy force coming in, so we need to have a look and see which part of the grid that will appear on. Yeah, in one, two will be seven, and it is in uh, grid seven, so it's up there at the top. And we need to re roll, and with this, um, we can have uh, the Germans can move uh, under the leader. So I'm going to say we can uh, operate on the right hand side but not on the left and for the three all of the uh, uh, PEF units and our non-player unit can move. So let's start with the PEF here and it stands still. A new unit here on the right hand side and uh, in fact it moves uh, six inches away from the Germans right at the back there, just by the uh, railway track. And we have these two uh, by the tree. The first one stays where it is. Uh, the second uh, moves into this position, advancing in this area. So uh, I think we might need to have a test and see whether they can be seen. Uh, it's a little confusing as we've got a lot of troops there, so let's have a look and see whether there are actually any PEF in that unit. Uh, so it's just uh, one on the rep for the Germans, so uh, that means that uh, they don't uh, appear uh, at this stage. I'm just going to put a marker here where that PEF was, and now we need to test and see what the uh, non-player unit is going to do, see if it's going to continue uh, to move. This time we are testing it on uh, the attack table. And uh, yep, we uh, pass with uh, two. Now I need to test these two men to see if they will be uh, okay. They won't move on this session, but uh, yeah, they're both fine. Uh, they won't move here, but can move next time. Now this unit, uh, the light machine gun, is going to do some cover and fire again, but this time fire up at the uh, rifles up at the top there. I'm going to let the machine gun fire to fire first, uh, because the rifles haven't got uh, an action this turn. They may respond to this. But uh, the machine gun's going to fire first, so I think it can hit uh, two men. Uh, but it doesn't, it's a miss. We can use this unit uh, with our leader with five, so he's going to move uh, this unit back to its original position in order the mortar to fire. Make sure that unit can move. Yes, it can. Back in position, but isn't firing. So for this turn, the very last thing we need to do is the mortar again firing at that light machine gun. Uh, this time it's a hit. And with a hit, I'm going to say it's going to see it's going to hit the machine gunner, his immediate crew, and uh, also the VB launcher. Although he's run out uh, at the moment, so the red dice is going to be the guy with the machine gun, and he's killed, uh, as is his crew member, and the uh, the only person to be uh, okay or just to knock back will be the uh, VB launcher. But we need to uh, take a test. Right, we need to take a test for the whole unit. Two of them being killed. Uh, that's now we've got one. Uh, so we need to uh, have a look and see what response uh, we make. Okay, so 
As a consequence of that, uh, the result is that the units uh, will uh, duck back, so they need to uh, get back into cover. And that's how I'm going to end the turn. You turn, and uh, we've got uh, all forces that can move. Now the first thing I'm going to test is this machine gun team here. Remember that we had a unit over here to see whether it had actually seen it or not. So we're going to test that and to see whether they, uh, they actually appear. And uh, certainly uh, we had to roll an additional uh, dice, but they have definitely been seen. Now what we need to see is whether the unit that's been seen there is in a defensive position or a standard position. So five and six, it's in a defensive position. Uh, no, it's not. Now I'm going to take uh, a slightly different option in terms of the um, reinforcements that appear. We've already got one uh, unit on the board. Therefore I'm going to use a different table, which is the uh, version four options about reinforcements. And we need to see how many times we uh, chain, we meet uh, the rep, and that's twice. So when it's 2d6 passed, and uh, it's not a double because we've got a 1 and a 3, it says if there's no double score, the rest of the platoon arrives. So uh, that would be another, se another section uh, joining uh, the one that was originally there. We have a man at the back there by uh, the tree, and that uh, for me would mean... That is the third section. So my overall interpretation of that is this, is that we have our two officers uh, are going to be held in the shed because the strength uh, for the French and indeed for their officer and our leader is amongst this group. I haven't put the uh, third squad out yet, but certainly in terms of a strong position, uh, we have our uh, Senegalese infantry holding this line with an officer in here, and uh, although we might have two further uh, potential enemy forces, which I think I'm going to suggest is from a separate, a separate platoon up at the top there, I think it's extremely difficult for uh, this depleted German squad, and that on the other side, to uh, make any head road in terms of getting uh, into... Uh, into this force. I'm going to complete this turn to see how it goes, but this is where the game sits at the moment. So my overall interpretation of the game would be that uh, the Germans have uh, followed up to try and get the uh, officers. The French have withdrawn and withdrawn towards the back of this field, regrouped, and then have uh, come back to what essentially is to retake the position that they lost to the Germans earlier. So we have seen that this unit has changed from a defensive to a, an attacking one, taken casualties and been uh, held back there, and we have uh, other squads behind it. So I think the idea would be, even though it's the non-player, is that they're looking to come back offensively and do that. It could be that they've also got uh, further support, wider from the uh, uh, from a second a platoon which is over on the other side here so uh, let's see if anything happens with that in terms of moving towards the Germans but I think we might uh, by the end of this turn come to some kind of conclusion about the likely outcome. So would the uh, uh, potential enemy here move any further forward? Uh, no it would stay where it is. And the one right at the back there will that go back to its original position? Uh, no it stays where it is. Now, we need to test this unit. Uh, it was uh, on an attacking move, uh, however it was uh, hit with casualties and then had to drop back. There's a couple of things we have to test. We have to test as a non-player unit what it does, similarly the same way we have to do for this unit at the back there, but also we need to test whether, uh, if it was going to move forward, whether it'll get past its uh, jump back test. So let's test what it would do in the first place. Uh, it passes um, for its rep, so therefore it will really uh, continue what it was doing, I think. I'll double check that, but I think it should stay moving forward, if it could. However, to do so beforehand, it would have to test uh, and get past its uh, jump back test. So they jumped back previously, yeah, but they only passed with one. Right, in fact, we only passed by one, so we need to retake it, and uh, if we only get one again this time, the unit will uh, be hunkered down. Yeah, but they passed with both, uh, so they'll be okay to continue. 
So that unit in this phase doesn't move, uh, it's taking cover, and uh, but we need to test the one behind it and to see how it will uh, operate as a unit. Now that's uh, now that would be uh, just one. However, we've got our leader uh, with it with a leadership of five, so that should be able to uh, pass with five and uh, operate uh, whichever way uh, it wishes. And I'm going to say that that unit consolidates its position. It can fire with its light machine gun, but we need to test that against the uh, uh, German machine gun here, which is already in position to see who can fire first. And before we work out the fighting or the firing, I should say, uh, these German this German unit has moved up towards the building, be able to occupy it next time, be able to fire with this uh, rifle section. I already said they're going to fire with the machine gun team, and the last unit uh, to uh, acknowledge is the mortar team. So the machine gun teams are going to fire at each other. Who fires first? Uh, it's going to be the Germans. Germans fire, and they can hit three men, and they do. Red Dice is the one, uh, the man holding the machine gun, and he's killed. And with a man down, uh, we need to take a man down test. We have the leader uh, with it. Therefore, we pass. That's uh, fine. We also need to test this one though, because it's standing right ne next to the man who's been killed, uh, and that is only a one. With a one, it means duck back. So this unit uh, is going to move uh, further back towards its original position. Also got the four German rifles firing, and in every case, uh, that's prompted uh, a return fire. So just if you're, if you're not familiar with the game, is that if we get uh, just a, a one rather than two dice uh, hitting, depending on what that uh, unit is doing, we'll get a, uh, a, a return fire. And so we've got four rifles here. If a similar situation happens to the Germans, they will return fire back the same way. And uh, if we got the same result again, the French would fall back. So it's just uh, to... Uh, make that differential that this doesn't continue forever, it just happens uh, twice in total. French fire back, same rep. So as I mentioned, uh, three uh, of the Germans, uh, they're okay, but they will return fire, but one is hit. And so the one that's hit, what happens to him? He's killed. Now with the man on the end killed, we need to take a man down test. We're going to do a man down uh, test before they return fire, and that's no problem, they'll be okay. They fire at the French, this time it's only three men firing. Now you'll see that the black dice will mean that the Frenchman won't return fire this time for a second time. Instead he will drop back, but the other two are hit. So, two men hit, uh, one and a four. And with that we have one man knocked out, and uh, one will be fine. But the uh, fact that we have somebody knocked out means we need to take another man down test. And that's, uh, that's fine, they'll pass it. Uh, last thing we need to do is the mortar. And another hit by the mortar. The mortar's going to affect these two men uh, the other side of the fence. And uh, that's not uh, hit them, but they uh, will carry on. Right, I need to try and come to some point at the end of this game to see where uh, where we are. The, uh, the position down at the bottom there is uh, not one that the Germans can simply storm, certainly not with uh, the unit in uh, this position. Uh, what I thought might happen is that the uh, French might advance close enough to get to this building and so this might be contested. However, uh, the uh, PEF just by the wood there has uh, remained fairly static and uh, the German unit here I think is going to occupy this building uh, without so uh, much of a problem and realistically if they do that they could then simply fire down onto that unit there. So uh, I am going to do one more turn just to see if the PEF uh, get any closer to this building but if they don't um, I think we might need to make our own mind up to see whether the French might withdraw with or without uh, the officers they had taken uh, taken prisoner. Okay, let's see uh, how we work. Um, both units can operate. Now, that's a really significant role. 
I didn't realise at the point when I rolled it, but it, uh, it's a seven, which means that the Germans, as the attackers, uh, get uh, reinforcements. And in addition to that, uh, because they're on the attack, we add one to this roll. So we roll 2d6 and see what the Germans get as support. So, 11. And with 11, it's fighting vehicles, and I think that might mean the game. And so, uh, we roll 1d6 and see whether we get uh, three or four fighting vehicles. So three. Let's have a look uh, whether they come in in one, two or three for the area. So it's two. And so very much in the nick of time. I think uh, we've seen uh, what is going to be a, uh, a game changers for the, or game changer for the Germans. Uh, we've got uh, some motorcycles coming in uh, and also a Panzer II, and without any uh, anti-tank capability, I think the French are going to make uh, an honourable withdrawal. Right, I am going to uh, call a halt uh, at this point uh, with the appearance of armour. Uh, this uh, video, I think, is uh, around about an hour, so um, I think that's uh, good enough time to have a look at the uh, have a look at the game and see how we've uh, how we've gone. I think realistically, in terms of the French, as the uh, see. The appearance of the uh, German armour would withdraw, they have no anti-tank capability. And I think they'd probably leave uh, the officers in the shed, allowing the Germans to uh, pick them up and take uh, some time there and allowing the French to withdraw. So I think to some extent honours even, uh, but uh, it is a German victory, the objective was to uh, get the officers back. I think you can interpret it whichever way you like and say well it might be that we take the uh, officers with us. But I think at this point, with armour appearing, I think uh, we'll uh, uh, finish here and say that's the uh, at the end, and we'll give it a, a German victory at the end of this game. And finally, I just want to say thanks for watching. Really appreciate uh, you watching all the way through there with the uh, with the video. Really welcome all your thoughts, either on uh, connected to the uh, YouTube channel itself or on the Nuts Facebook group. So if you look up uh, Nuts man-to-man -man combat and there's uh, some details here on the screen just join the group and carry on the uh, discussion make your own suggestions about how we might play some uh, new games be them uh, France 1940 or uh, anything else in that uh, in that period so just uh, finally thanks uh, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you next time